Hey guys, I'm Ryan. I'm John. And we're Birdie Journey. Today we're here in Fort Carson, Colorado at Cheyenne Shadows Golf Course. We're gonna be learning a little bit about golf course management. We got a special guest today, Leighton Smith. Oh, hey guys, didn't see you there. <laughs> today, Leighton's gonna teach us about how to better manage the golf course and avoid those rookie mistakes that a lot of us weekend amateurs tend to make in a golf course. What's up guys, I'm excited to be with you. Today, basically we're just gonna be going over, like you said, golf course management. So many questions I get, it's like, I warmed up great on the range, but how do I get it to the course, right? Today, that's what we're gonna be going over. Awesome. awesome. We're Love gonna take it. you to the first hole here. Let's do it. All right. So we got par four, 372. My stock shot lately off the box has been a little bit of a draw. Okay. So I'm gonna hug the right side of the uh, tee box. My target line is gonna be that tree down there at the end and hope I can draw off. Yeah, smart play. I like that, especially since you move it right to left, I think, I mean, I like how you're on the right side of the box because now it gives you a little bit more room to aim right. Okay. Keep swinging, find that target, swing all the way through it and try to get it curved back to the left. All right, let's execute it. Swing. A little bit down the middle, draw off the left. Should be playable. Okay, Layden, I play a little left to right, a little different shot. Okay. My ball gets a little more air on it. Hug the left side of the box and play about right edge of these trees. Yeah, I like it. I think that's great. All right, so now what would you do here? So guys, the first thing I do when, I, when I'm on the tee, especially if I've been able to warm up a little bit, I like to kind of feel which way the ball's going. Okay. Even if may, maybe I'm a little bit off and I know that I'm missing right, I kind of have that mental knowledge. So when I set up on this hole, I'm not seeing any hazards on the left or right, nothing to really worry about. So I'd kind of play my stock shot, which is a little bit of a cut. So what I like to do in that case is I come over to the far right side of the tee box. Okay. I'll throw a ball down and when I get behind it, part of what I'm doing here is picking my line and I'm trying to see, visualize which way the ball is curved, sure. right? So no matter what I would say on this swing, what I like to do is eliminate half the hole. Okay. okay? So what that means is, if anything, I'm gonna expect this ball to spin to the right. Ideally, I'd like to keep it in the fairway, but I know that if I grip it and rip it, my miss is gonna be on the right, and in this case, that's not gonna put me in any trouble. Sure. Okay. So you're taking out one side of the fairway to eliminate any trouble to your shape. Exactly. All right. Nice draw. Good ball. Nice little cut. All right. Cool. Okay, Layton, so obviously on mine, it went straight, kind of went where I wanted, but I did get under the ball a little bit, so I left a lot of distance. Without being up there, it looks like I'm probably still 200 yards yeah, out. Yeah, about 200. Is it better to go for the green here or to just get a little closer and try and get a chip shot in? You know what, this is where I'd say, it's kind of going with what you're comfortable for. The main thing I look at, and whether you go for it or not, is what trouble's up there. So you can see if you do rip it, let's say you step on an iron, get it all the way up there, hybrid, whatever it may be. Sure. There's no water, there's no severe bunkers up there. So I kind of like the thought of just going for just it. Just going for it? Yep. Great. So as we walk up to our ball here, I already like to kind of take in, kind of where are the mountains? In Colorado, we know the ball tends to break away from the mountain. Sure. We like to look up at the green, see what hazards are there, if there's any water. And now we know we have about, you know, 30 second walk to our ball, but we're already thinking, we're looking at the wind, we're kind of looking at the lie up there. We're seeing if there's anything crazy we need to take into account. Sure. Right? And this is where, if there were water, let's say short of the green, this would be a time you're starting to process if you want to go ahead and lay up, okay. or if you do want to grip and rip it. Sure. As we said, in this case, not much trouble up there, so I'd say once we get up here, a couple deep breaths and we grip it and rip it. Sounds good. Okay, so this is kind of my in-between shot. We're about 190 out right now, so I'm in between a seven and a six. That's how I play. I can overswing a seven, and then I have that chance of bleeding it off. Yeah, exactly. So what I like, when I'm in between clubs, usually the safest bet, and it kind of depends on wind and lie, but would take the six and just do a smooth kind of three-quarter swing, you know? Great. We all get in trouble when we try to rip it too much, and that's adding spin to the ball, which is, you know, causing a Sure, line. absolutely. Now I have a little trouble stopping the ball. Should I aim a little short since that grass is tall, or just aim center of fairway? I like green? it, yeah, I like center of the green kind of right at that hut just left of the pin. Great. Stayed a little short. Now, my struggle is on approach shots like this, too much spin. Okay. Yeah. So I don't know how I generate that kind of spin, 
yep. if it's the greens I'm playing or if it's something that I'm doing in my uh, swing. Sure. So when I take that kind of approach, am I looking, because it's not a consistent spin either. Right. So am I going to want to always play long or am I going to always want to play short? Good question. I'd say it depends. And what's causing that, that spin on the ball is, you know, when we, when we catch it really smooth and, and kind of a solid contact strike and we're hitting down on it. Uh -huh. So in this case, it looks like we have about 110 yards. Depends a little bit on the right side of the green, which means the safe side would be the left. Okay. So if you're spinning it, especially this would be the yardage to do that, I'd say we play it about 113 or so. so and if we spin long. it back, great. And if not, we're left for a 10 footer for birdie. Okay. And then, so do I want to think about like leaving myself, because this doesn't have too much slope or anything like that. Right. And one of the things I think about too is I want to always leave myself an uphill putt because when I have downhill putts, I cannot get the touch with the break. Right. So I can be a little bit more aggressive with a harder and more room to miss with an uphill putt. Right. And that's where in this case, I like that pine tree behind okay. the green. And that line would be just a little bit left of the pin. And again, that's the safer side of the green to aim. And the main thing with yardage control, whether we're spinning or not, is to have the number in your head. So okay. when you grab this, we know we want to hit at 113. So that means we can hit, you know, a full lob wedge, a sand wedge, a gap wedge, whatever it may be, no matter what, the practice swing needs to emulate 113 yards. So that's our number. That's the only thing we're thinking about. Yep. And our from, line and our number. You got it. From there, it's just deep breath, trust yourself, let it go. Cool. Got about 110 yards, but we're going to play this about 113 left on that pine. Great line. Ah, Good center. Dancing. Dancing. Time to salsa. <laughs> okay, Layton, so I'm sitting about 15 yards off of the fringe of the green here. Right now, this is probably my biggest struggle I deal with. I struggle to either take a pitching wedge and land it short and let it run, or to flop it up and just hope I land soft. Right. What's gonna be a better shot here? Yeah, good question. You're not the only one that kind of struggles in this range. It's, it's really all about touch. The main thing is, for a shot, is looking at where the pin is on the green. In this case, since the pin's a little bit towards the back, we know that we can play it in there a little bit lower. So since it's low, it doesn't necessarily mean that we have to grab the pitching wedge or nine iron and do a bump and run. I like to keep it kind of, let's say medium and land it just right on the front of the green and let it release towards the back. Great. All right, a little firm. That it though, good shot. So if we had to do that again and you had a mulligan, what would you change about that? I think I tried and landed just a little shorter. It came out a little faster than what I thought it was gonna. It was sitting up and I probably should have took that into account. Yep, exactly. And usually around the greens. Oh, it's a rebel right here. <laughs> so wait a second or what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Funny jokes. Uh, yeah, but they're not appropriate. <laughs> I heard some really good ones yesterday. <laughs> so usually around the greens, controlling the distance of chip shots is done with club selection but also how you set up to it. You mind if I show you? Absolutely. Good, so we'll play it in here. I This is a lob wedge in my hand, hand that I have here. The main thing in controlling the loft is how we set up to the club, or to the ball, excuse me. So if I set this club in, and I take kind of a normal stance as I would if I were 50 yards out, and I set up, that club face has a lot of loft. Now since we want to hit this ball a little bit lower and have it release, the first thing we want to do is have it set up a little bit more towards the back of our stance have our hands a little bit more upright. And when I stand in here, now you can see my stance is nice and low. If we're hitting high, or perhaps even in a bunker shot, which we might find later, that's where we'd get really wide, we'd open up the stance, and we'd have a lot of loft, sure. okay? So for this shot, ball back, weight forward, not gonna have a lot of wrist hinge. Let's see what we can do. Thank you. Why he's a pro. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Lane. I've got probably what, maybe a 15, 20 footer? Yep. Okay. A little slider. There's three things that I look at when I'm putting. One, distance. Yep, absolutely. Do I have a hill? Do I have a ridge? What am I working with? Am I downhill? Am I uphill? And then I create that old pyramid for myself. Yeah, I like it. Come to the other side, and that's where I see where it's going. Is it an uphill putt? Is it a downhill putt? Where's my spines? So for this one, I'm seeing it's an uphill putt all the way up to about this ridge might flatten out and release a little quick. I like it. So now, the main thing you want to think about with these putts is your first word is all speed, right? Okay. Because even if, if there's a lot of break, we know it's going to be tough to get the line exact. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we want a good putt. We know we can hit it. But if we miss it, we want a little tap in, right? Okay. So one thing I like to do, can I show you a little trick? Absolutely. One thing I like to do is when you come in here and you set up for your practice stroke, 
rather than focus right here on where the ball would be and thinking about your stroke, I like to put the eyes out on the hole or maybe like you said, a spine or apex, that breaking point. I like to look out there, do strokes. So now I'm really connecting kind of my brain and my hands. Uh -huh. And when I get back over the ball, it's more about just relaxing, thinking about that spot and just letting it go. Okay. Give it a shot. All right. So picking a spot where I think it's gonna start to break off of. Yeah, I think this one would play about a foot left. Uh, I always try to find a mark or a line and I like that on it or inside it. I like it. Oh. See that, that speed, that's what kills us. Then play that. The dreaded three putt. The dreaded three putt. <laughs> on and two. We got time though, we'll get it going. So that's obviously an amateur common mistake. All what day. what pointers do you have for something like that when you know you're missing and you're missing short? Well, first one I'd say is try tennis. No, okay. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> the first one I like to say is it's more it gets mental because then the more three putts you have, more bad putts you have, it gets in your head, right. right? And then the next putt you have for par that's six feet away, you're thinking, oh crap, I just missed on the last three holes. Now you know I'm not sure if I'm gonna make this. Yeah. So focus more on the hole, more. Just on the speed, okay, and let it happen. You're gonna make them, you're gonna miss them, but we just want to keep it consistent. So more important to get the speed than it is to get the break, because then you have a shorter or a more closer around the hole. Exactly, and the closer we get into the hole, then it's more about line, since we know we'll get the speed right. Cool. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. All right. All right. So tell us a little bit about your certifications and your PGA classification, if you will. Absolutely. Yeah. So. In college, I went to the University of Colorado in Colorado Springs, and they have what's called a PGA Golf Management Program. Okay. So that program, it kind of lines you up. I went through the school of business at the same time and got a degree, but it lines you up to, you know, a lot of my peers wanted to be general managers or head professionals. I always knew I wanted to teach. So in that program, I'm learning about the golf swing, I'm learning about ball flights, but we also do internships. Okay. And I utilize those internships to try different golf academies. So I did a, a Nike Golf Academy in Northern Michigan, I worked with Hank Haney in South Carolina, and that's where... Tiger Woods swing coach. All day. Um, former. Minor former, details. Former. Minor, former, yeah. minor detail. Um, anyways, with that, you know, when I was in South Carolina, that's that's when I, in 2011, I turned professional. Um, so I got my Class A card, which basically, it's the highest PGA status, but really what it does is it shows you you're an expert in the game and the business. So okay. at that time, I was working for Hank Haney directly, and... Really there, it's like I learned about the business of golf. Obviously, I was teaching all day, every day, and I loved it. In 2013, I, I moved out to Colorado and started a first tee program, which is all about the kids, and it's it's teaching them life skills through the game of golf. And a couple years ago, I branched out and I started my own business, Leighton Smith Golf. And with that, my goal is just to reach every golfer, no matter where they're at in their game, and show them kind of that they can reach their goals. Because not everyone's trying to make the tour, and a lot of guys who are or 40 with big old beer bellies or still have the PJ Tour dream alive. Yeah. And I say, let's get after it, right? Yeah. It's all about backing up and putting in the work, but that's where I like to meet people where they're at and, and kind of know that they can get to those dreams if they put in the work. All right, guys, so we're at the second hole here at Shine Shadow. So this hole is infamous for a lot of high scores. Over on the right side of this fairway, you can see it, the hole bends to the left. They call that Rattlesnake Canyon off to the right for said reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the main thing is, is yeah, exactly. When, when we see a dog leg on the course, we have to know off the tee box, it's, you hear Phil Mickelson say it all the time, it's, man, I hit that great or I missed in the right spot, yeah. right? Sure. So in this case, if we set up and we miss on the right side, yes, it's, it's somewhat open over there considering we're not in a rattlesnake bed, <laughs> but really that's just gonna make the hole that much longer. Sure. Okay. So one of the tips that Hank Haney always said back in the day was, tee up on the side of trouble. So what that means is, if this hole is bending to the left, you can see, yes, there's trees on the left, but the real trouble's on the right. And that's just because that would make the, this par five hole extra long, sure, okay? Yeah, sure. So when we're teeing it up, I like to tee it up on this right side. Because now, when I'm set up over the ball, I have the whole left side of the hole to work with. Sure. If I'm scared and I tee up over here because I'm just scared of the dog leg, all that does is it opens up the whole right side of this hole, right. okay? Yep. So just by teeing off in the right spot, you can already almost save a stroke on the hole. Sure. Okay. Now what about club selection here? So a guy like me, I fear, and I just want to lay up about 200, 225 out there because I want to protect my score. Right. 
So more aggressive line here, or what, what's your? What's That's your a good mindset? point. I mean, it, it's all about kind of knowing where you're at. I'm a grip it and rip it kind of guy, and, and the difference is, really, how you know is, let's say if this tee shot, if we're sitting back here trying to choose a club, if it doesn't go well, we just have to know if we're gonna hit driver that. I might miss this, but I know I can miss it in the right spot. Okay. Sure. Meaning I have a little bit of control over my club. Now, a lot of people, like you said, are kind of fearful. And they know they don't want a big number that they can have if they hit the driver. Yeah. That's where I'd, I'd like a three wood here because there's no harm. It's a par five. It's longer. It's uphill. Yes, if you bomb a drive, you can reach it in two. But if you're keeping your three wood in play, then that's that's the call. Okay. okay. No harm. Stay out of Rouse Big Canyon. It'd be fun there. So I did canyon. I did exactly what you said not to do. <laughs> right over the top. Now laying with mine, I have a higher ball flight. So if I stay straight most of the time, is there any harm trying to go directly over the top of that tree? I like it. I keep it I'd like to say keep it a uh, right edge of that tree. Okay. And if you do have a little fade, which typically people hit it high, ball likes to drift over to the right. Sure. And that's where, you know, if it drifts right, you're in the fairway. If it stays dead straight, you should be fine too. Right. That's trouble. Yeah, it's all good. Because it, the thing is, even though you miss that to the left, yes. Yes, there's trees you might have to punch out. A hot shot to the right is making this a 600 yard hole. Makes it play right. longer. So yep. missing to the left. You punch is one the out, miss. you'll still be on in three. All right, guys, so you can see good drive up, up, up the left side a little bit. But now we're left with this big old tree. You can see we kind of have a Phil Mickelson window that we can punch it through. <laughs> but these shots, it's always about risk and reward, right? So let's say you have a really good round going. Couple birdies, couple pars, couple beers, just a good day. If we want to punch out, there's no harm, right? If we let's just say we want to hit one up there 100 yards, you know that's fine. But also, let's say your buddies are egging you on, you got a beer on the line for the hole, maybe you want to get up to the green, right? So the main thing is controlling loft, just how we talked about with those wedges. The wider stance I have, and the further away I am from the ball, it's adding loft to that face, right? So if we're in a punch shot situation. Just like we did with that pitch shot, we had the ball all the way back, right? Uh -huh. Our hands a little bit more upright. And here I just like making a little bit shorter swing and just making sure we finish low. Okay. We don't need to rip it. It's more just trust the club, trust the distance that you have. And if we miss, the ideal miss here anyway is a little bit short. So sure. it's not like we have to really rip it. If there's water, okay, maybe we, maybe we do have to rip it, right? So it's just paying attention to what's up there thinking about the trajectory you want and making sure it lines up with your stance. Does that make sense? Yes, sure. sir. All right, let's see it. I don't even see a tree. Yeah, exactly. Good shot, that's up. no harm. Came off super low, which if you err on one side, you'd rather err on the low side. A little low, so I yep. missed that tree. Yep. Awesome. So, just like you saw his, a little bit of a left spin, and I've, every time I've tried to do a punch shot, I've always, you know, just sliced it left. Okay. Is the ball flight supposed to do that or is it something that I'm doing wrong? And is that something that you want to play? Yeah, so I, I would say the main thing is just understanding, again, kind of where the trouble is or what you would want. Okay. If the ball is curving to the left, right, and it's kind of turning over, has that hook spin on it, right. then that's where, the, that means that our club face through impact, one, it can be just a little bit shut, but also the path, is swinging again a little bit into out. Okay. So that just like ping pong, that motion is putting a little bit of left spin on it, right? Okay. And that's where, again, that's gonna make it curve. As soon as we want it to go straight or even bend the other way, that's where if we swing a little more out, right? Outside of the ball and then across it, we'd see it cut back to the right. Does that okay. make sense? Yes. Yeah. So here I think ball back, catch it from the inside, swing into out. Oh no. A little left, but still no home put myself in more trouble. But he had good flight there. Yeah, really good flight. Nice and low, got out of the tree. Main thing, I, again, as Tiger Woods says, it's simple and as difficult as this, but low swing, low finish, right? Or low ball flight, low finish. As soon as you want it high, that's where we want to see a nice high finish, right? Okay. Yeah. We'll ball back, hands forward a little bit to de-loft it. Oh, nice. nice <laughs> got through. Yep. All right, your pitching the putt when we birdie. Great shot. Yeah. All right, so we've got my favorite shot. Sand trap in front of you, can't see the green. Somewhat of an idea as to maybe it's sloping this way. A lot of us amateurs won't go up there and look. Right. And you know, walk the green, get an idea as to where the land zone should be and stuff like that. So right. 
you as a professional and as an instructor, what are the first two things I need to think about with this shot? Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing I would say is looking at the pen, right? So okay. out here, a lot of courses have, they might have a checkered flag, they might have a solid flag or striped flag, whatever it may be, but they're signifying that the pin's in the back, it's in the middle of the front. Okay. So blue at shine shadows means the pin's all the way in the back. Okay. So what that telling what that's telling me is that if I hit this and let's say it lands right at the hole, that I'm out of green back there. Meaning like I don't want to be long because then I'll miss the green. So what the, what I would say is obviously in this case, we know we need to hit a little bit higher shot because of the bunker itself. But in order to do that, it's more about the ball position and the setup like we did, right? right. So if I set up to this one, I'm gonna set up opposite of the punch shot we just hit. Punch shot, we had the ball back, you know, weight forward, hands press really forward, which is de-lofting it, right? Okay. So if I set up on this, I'm gonna have the ball forward in my stance, my hand a little bit lower, and then I'm gonna take kind of a high swing, back, through, right? And keep it nice, high, and soft. And these, it's all about tempo. So if I set up, I try one in here. Again, weight's still pretty neutral, but I have all the loft on the face. Rough got me a little bit. Sit. You can tell just by the sound, probably landed just a little bit left of the green. In this perfect example, out here the rough, it can grab your club. So in order to do that, if I had to hit a mulligan myself, I'd open the face a little bit more, grip the club just a little bit tighter. Okay. Because on that one, as I swung, rough grabbed the club, de-lofted it just a little bit. Sure. Right? Does that make sense? Yeah, so when you're opening it up like that, you're trying to offset for the club head coming through and yep, grabbing it. Exactly. Attention. Okay. And that's that's the difference between hitting out of the rough and hitting out of the fairway. All right, so now we've got the opposite of what I had on the first hole. I've got a downhill putt. Yes. We're close to the mountain, so it's gonna break away from the mountain. You got it. Yep. And so anytime you're on the green, I like to just to look and find the high point of the green, which is usually gonna be closer to the mountain. So this right here, this is kind of the high side of the green. So you can tell everything kind of wants to trickle all the way to back down to that bunker. Okay. So the mountain is gonna influence, influence the, the break. It's gonna to wanna to push it to the right a little bit. But the main thing here is like, again, it's speed. So if we putt this, we kind of find the apex, right, of the, of the break. We just want that ball slowing down. Kind of the job back there that we're doing reading is like, where does the ball need to start slowing down, right? So if we hit it pretty firm and it starts slowing down here, it's obviously gonna roll past the hole. So that's where the touch comes in. But again, when we take our practice strokes, I like kind of just thinking, picking a spot where I think what they say, the ball's gonna die. Meaning it's gonna lose momentum and it's gonna slow down. That way it can just release and roll to the hole. Okay. Right? All right. So I'm gonna pick my die spot. A little bit left, maybe about two balls out left. I like it. So if we were playing in a tournament, you're just reading John's ball and just breaking off of his break, maybe a ball out since yep. you hit the line that you wanted. Exactly, just to title us. So where do you find most amateurs in this? Is it with like a push, a pull, or is it touch? Uh, you mean with putting? Yeah. I would say it's usually I'd say usually maybe a, a bit of a push. Okay. But the thing is with, with amateurs is where we gotta be careful is just the consistency, right? Okay. So if I can switch here. Yep. So if I'm putting and I use my wrist at all, right? And I, I really kind of push that club head through. Some some balls are gonna jump off the face. I'm gonna miss it long. And then the next stroke, what I do is I'd come out and just hit it a little softer, right? right? So all the time I see people just kind of nudge at it versus I like to see a little bit shorter stroke back and good acceleration through. Okay. I like to see the fall through maybe just a tad longer. And the only thing I'd say on top of that is when you're putting, just hold the finish. That way you get a feel for it. Just kind of train your eyes to look at the hole. Oh. And if you watch guys on, on tour, when they putt, they putt, ball's gone, then they look, they hold it, and then they let it relax. And that's because from hole to hole, that's how you develop your feel. If I just hit it really quick, I don't know if that was my wrist, if I looked up, you know, it's. All we want to do is develop a feel and get it consistent. That way, if we need to hit a little bit harder the next hole, we can without having to try and guess and push it. Okay. You know? Cool. All right. I like it. All right, guys. That's going to end the first video. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hopefully, you guys learned a few things out there with us today because I know I sure did, and I'm really excited to put them into play and really work on them. So, check down below for all of Layton's information. 
please feel free to reach out to him, set up a course management lesson or just a regular lesson. I've done a few of them with him and I love the fact that he does not break your swing down. He works with what you have so it doesn't get difficult. I love it. Check the link down below for part two. Thanks guys. Thanks.